In this video, we demonstrate how to set up the OpenBot firmware development environment on a computer, and explain how to deploy and test the firmware on an OpenBot vehicle. The firmware is the backbone of the OpenBot framework. It allows bridging the smartphone executing the OpenBot app and control policies, with the different sensors and actuators mounted on the vehicle. The OpenBot firmware is based on the Arduino framework, very popular with a wide audience of makers and engineers for its versatility and ease of use. The Arduino framework supports the deployment of the OpenBot firmware on a wide variety of development boards with only minor modifications in the code. In this video, we cover the deployment of the firmware on two Arduino-compatible boards, namely the Arduino Nano and the ESP32. Let's first install the Arduino Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, from the Arduino.cc website. Note that there are now two different versions of the Arduino IDE available on the official website. We currently only support the first version. On Mac, the install procedure is usually straightforward. After downloading the application bundle, simply copy it into your local applications folder and you should be ready to go. On Windows, you should follow the instructions of the installer app and click on Yes when prompted to install the Arduino drivers on your computer. The drivers will allow the IDE to communicate with your development board and to flash the OpenBot firmware on it. In case you work on a Linux machine, you usually have the choice between installing the Arduino IDE from your package manager, such as apt, or installing the latest version directly from the Arduino website. In the latter case, you must run the installed script contained in the install bundle. Once your development environment is installed, the next step is to set it up to compile the OpenBot firmware. Check the list of dependencies in the documentation according to the vehicle and control board you want to use. Because of the different sensors mounted on the robot, such as sonars or encoders, it is essential to be able to generate code interrupts from any pin of the control board. If this functionality is natively supported by the ESP32, it is however not the case for the Arduino Nano board, which only has a limited number of pins capable of generating interrupts. This issue can nevertheless be solved using the dedicated pin change interrupt library from Nico Hood. To install this library, or any other supported Arduino library, navigate to Tools, Manage Libraries, in your IDE and browse for your library into the list. Let's now try to compile the OpenBot firmware for use on an Arduino Nano development board. Start by opening the OpenBot firmware into your IDE. The first, and most important step is to correctly set your vehicle using the provided definition variables. In this first example, we will consider the ready-to-run version of the OpenBot vehicle, which is built around the very same microcontroller as the Arduino Nano board, namely the ATmega 328P. The ready-to-run versions of the OpenBot vehicle are meant to be used out of the box and are hence already fully supported at the hardware, software and firmware levels. To set the code to work with this vehicle, simply adjust the OpenBot definition flag at line 47 to RTR underscore TT. This will enable proper hardware and pin definitions. In the Tools, Board menu, make sure that the board is set to Arduino AVR Boards, Arduino Nano. Also make sure that you are using the old bootloader version, otherwise your code will fail to compile. You may now connect the vehicle's control board to your computer. Board detection should be automatic. In the Tools, Port menu, select the serial port allocated to your board. You may first want to check that your code is successfully compiling by pressing the top left button in the IDE main menu. You can finally flash your code on the control board by pressing the upload button on the right of the build button. The whole build plus flash process should only take a couple of seconds. To deploy the OpenBot firmware on an ESP32 platform, such as the RTR520 vehicle, you should first make sure that your IDE has all the required modules to support ESP microcontrollers. To enable proper support of the ESP32 development boards on the Arduino IDE, go to the Preferences menu and paste the following URL in the Additional Boards Manager URLs field. Once done, navigate to the Tools, Board menu and open the Board Manager. In the Board Manager, Use the search tool to find the newly added ESP32 boards collection and click on the install button. 
The installation process should not take more than a few seconds, after which you should be able to compile the OpenBot firmware for ESP32 platforms using the Arduino IDE. As we are working on the RTR520 vehicle, don't forget to change the OpenBot variable appropriately into the code. Note that on Linux and Mac, you might experience a compile time issue with the ESP32 module, related to the migration from Python 2 to Python 3. Fortunately this issue can be solved in a quite straightforward manner by simply editing the file, platform.txt, in the Arduino 15 folder, and replacing the terms, Python, by, Python 3. After successfully flashing the firmware on your open bot, you can test its behavior using the serial monitor. First of all, make sure that the wheels are not connected to the car, that the Arduino is connected to the computer, and that the correct USB port is selected. Then open the Arduino serial monitor in Tools, Serial Monitor. The serial monitor supports the firmware debugging process by displaying sensor readings as well as any relevant information made available in the firmware. It also makes it possible to send messages to the control board at runtime. To do so, simply type a command into the input field on the top and then press send. For instance, the following command will make the wheels rotate at full speed in forward direction. This command will now make the wheels rotate at full speed, but in reverse direction. For more details on the available commands, check the firmware documentation. Congratulations! The open bot is now ready to be connected to a smartphone. This will be the topic of the next video. Before testing the car with a smartphone that has the open bot application installed, you can also test the car without a phone first. Simply set the option no phone mode to 1 in the code. The car will drive at normal speed and slow down as it detects obstacles with the ultrasonic sensor. Once it gets close to the turn threshold, by default 50 cm, it will start turning in a random direction and turn on the LED on that side. If the estimated free space in front of the car falls below the turn threshold, it will slowly go backwards while both LEDs will turn on. Check out the firmware today and share videos of your experiments on YouTube or on the Slack community channel.